Hello and welcome to episode 16 of Novel Knits. My name is Danelle and this is my YouTube channel where I talk about what I'm knitting and what I'm reading and pretty soon I will be talking about hand dyeing yarn again. I'm starting up again in February, end of February, but February for sure. I ended up sort of taking an unintentional hiatus. I was doing really well kind of dyeing some yarn and having fun with it and then um, I took the summer off which turned into the fall and holidays and yeah I have sort of a frustrating setup right now um, I need like another circuit breaker because sometimes if I'm dying yarn and my son's playing Fortnite or something um, I will lose all power and I'm in darkness with wet yarn dye and a big mask on my face and that's not really fun so I'm trying to figure that out <laughs> as well so that yarn dyeing is a little bit more fun of an experience um, I live in near Milwaukee, Wisconsin with my husband, um, our 13 year old daughter, Claire, our almost 11 year old son, Milo, and our dog, Penelope, who you may hear or see. She always thinks when I'm talking to a camera that it's time to play. It Zoom calls for work, whatever. So I don't know what it is. She's getting a little quirky in her old age. And then we have a betta fish named Aang as well. He is named after a character in Avatar. Yes, do you wanna come up? Come on then, come on. No, I'm not playing right now. So Penelope is wearing her proud puppy sweater today. It's about a negative seven degrees here. Whoop. So we're cold <laughs> always right now. Um, but yeah, so if you wanna find me outside of this channel, I'll have things listed in the description box below this video, not on Penelope, below the video, um, where you can find me on Instagram, Ravelry, and I started a group on Ravelry um, to have threads for a couple knit alongs that I'm doing this year. So I'm Novel Knit Girl in both places. I also have a Gmail account if you wanna send me a message. It's novelknitgirl at gmail.com. <laughs> Oh my gosh, I'm really sorry. <laughs> so today I have Vital Few where I'm gonna talk about just a few things going on for this channel as well as in my life. It'll be quick, I promise. And then we are going to do finished objects because I have a lot today. And then a couple works in progress and then book club and then we will be done. So um, let's start with Vital Few. I have two knit alongs that I'm hosting this year. I will have all the information down below for the Ravelry group, but if you don't do Ravelry or you wanna participate in both places, please feel free to. You can also participate on Instagram. So the first one is Shop Your Stash 2022, and that's the hashtag, Shop Your Stash 2022. And that is um, any project that you make I mean, if you're watching this channel, you're likely a knitter, but it can be if you're a cross stitch or macrame or any any real project that you have all of the um, supplies for that you had in your stash before 2022, um, that that is eligible. So you can put anything you want into this knit along. I'm very open. I just want people to enjoy what they've already purchased and um, shop your own stash for once for a year. So anything that you knit, crochet, make that was in your possession or at least purchased before January 1st, 2022 is eligible. So, and then we're gonna do this all year, all year long and I'll have quarterly prizes and it should be a lot of fun. So I'll try to be a little creative with prizes if I'm getting a lot of not knitting and crocheting things, then maybe I'll uh, go out and, you know, think outside of the box for some other kind of prizes, but we'll kind of see what kind of participation we have. But for me, it's knitting from my stash for sure. Um, I also have a few, I have a few embroidery kits I may pull out and I also have a macrame kit. I have a paint by numbers kit, but I don't know if that paint is still even gonna work because that's like over a year old now. So anyway, but those are all things that would qualify. But for me, it's mostly gonna be knitting. The other knit along is sweater year 2022. And that again is the hashtag. There's also threads on Ravelry in the group. I think it's called the Novel Knits Podcast Group. I'll have it linked below if I'm wrong. Um, and this is any sweater that you knit or crochet this year. It does not have to be out of stash yarn. It's just let's knit sweaters. I have a, I have a huge sweater yarn stash that I need to start using or else I have to stop buying sweater quantities of yarn. <laughs> so that is my reasoning. And yeah, I don't have a lot of um, 
I don't have a lot of rules for that one. Oh, and the shop your stash one, uh, the only rule is that 75% of the project has to be out of stash yarn. So like if you're doing color work or something and you need another color, uh, that's fine. Um, or if you need an extra skein that you had to purchase to finish the project, that's fine. At least 75% of the project has to be with stash yarn. Okay, and over the last two episodes, I have been hosting a giveaway, my very first one, and I'm very excited. So I had some people leave comments on the last two videos. So I wrote down who commented. I just said, what are you planning to make in the next year? And that's all you had to answer. And I think I had like six or seven comments. So that was really exciting. I know that's not like a lot compared to most podcasters, but I was really excited. So, um, and then I literally drew out of a hat. So the winner is my friend Kim, a sweet pea and chickadee. Um, so Kim, you won this great sock set and this um, Jay Hendry bag. I'm so excited that I get to send this out to you. So um, send me a DM on Instagram, or if I don't hear from you in a week or so, I will reach out to you and let you know that you are the winner. Um, and I will get that out to you. Don't worry if you didn't win, I'm gonna have a lot more chances for you to win prizes this year. I'm really excited about that. Um, I'm really in this like de-stashing mood right now. And it's not been easy. There are definitely days when I have been listing yarn on eBay or, you know, deciding whether or not I really think I'll use yarn because I love everything that I've ever gotten. But I um, have, I well, now I don't, but when I started, I had over 500 skeins of yarn in my stash on Ravelry. And I'm not great with math, but even I know <laughs> that that was too much for me. Um, and for, I mean, I don't even go through a whole skein of yarn a month always, you know, so I, it, it was really time for me to have some self-reflection. So I'm pulling some things aside for prizes. I'm selling some things and um, overall I'm feeling a lot better. Um, feeling like I'm not so overwhelmed with yarn. But anyway, back to the giveaway and back to Kim. Um, she also has a podcast, Sweet Pea and Chickadee podcast that she does with her daughter and I really love watching them and she does, she's a great knitter and crocheter so she's a lot of fun to watch. So if you haven't, check out Kim. She's great. Okay, um, what else has been going on? It feels like a lot. I did record this episode last week but I was having some really weird lighting and you can kind of see I'm having some weird lighting again today. I don't know what's going on. Winter is apparently... A weird time in the basement I don't know uh, for lighting but it was really bad and I just decided I I wasn't happy with it so I decided to re-record so hopefully I don't miss anything and hopefully this is okay um, we are getting ready to go to Disney in a few weeks like exactly two weeks and I'm really stressed out about it <laughs> Um, I went with my daughter, she had a dance competition there about four and a half years ago, and um, I was only there for three days because we had to get back for a family wedding, so we didn't, please stop, you're snagging my sweater, um, the dog. Um, we had to get back for a family wedding, so while we were there she was in a dance competition, she was in a dance convention class thing. She was in a parade in Magic Kingdom, but almost all of our time was spent in Epcot. And I think we went on two and a half rides. We went on the new Frozen ride at the time and Soren, And then we tried test track twice, but it broke down both times. <laughs> so that is my whole Disney experience. Like we really didn't have one. So I always promised her we would go back and we decided that this was the year because we're, you know, like everybody, like everybody wants a vacation, right? Because it's been a really rough two years. And I, we had up until 30 days before the trip to cancel and we decided not to, even though there's COVID. We have N95 masks and we decided we all really still need this. So now we're just trying not to get ill before it happens <laughs> and, um, yeah, just trying to figure out how everything works because it, it it's even different now from how it was before. So this will be my, my last time recording before we go to Disney. So yeah, hopefully I'll be de-stressed by the time we get back. <laughs> and I'm trying to figure out like what 
what um, knitting projects to pack because I don't want, obviously I'm doing the year of sweaters, but I don't want to bring a sweater with me to Disney to work on. I just think it's too much. So I'm trying to figure out what kind of projects I want to bring. And I don't know why I'm kind of against bringing socks, but I'll probably bring at least one sock. We'll see. So yeah, anyway, anyway uh, the only other news in our life is uh, my husband's birthday is on the 30th and my son's birthday is on the 31st. So I'm getting ready for the birthday boys and yeah, that's about it. So that's my life update. My world's very small. <laughs> All right, let's get into finished objects. I am wearing my first one. This is the watercolored pullover by Tiff Nealon. She released this last week and I test knit it for her. So I'll stand up so you can see. So it's got this obviously beautiful color work yoke and then it's a really nice size. I really like the yarn I chose. It has color work on the sleeves here. So yeah, I have been wearing this a ton since I finished it. I really, really like this sweater. Um, I am using two skeins of DK weight yarn held double, which I have to admit is not my favorite. I think it feels a little heavy, um, but I mean, it's so pretty. And I have been wearing it a ton. It fits me really, really well, which I'm also really happy about. Um, so again, watercolored pullover by Tiff Nealon. I, for the body, I held Sugar Plum Circus BFL DK in Driftwood and Teeny Button Studio Squish DK in Dale T colors together. And thank goodness because, um, the Sugar Plum Circus BFL is a little scratchy and the Teeny Button Studios really softens it up for me, which I mean, I'm wearing a tank top underneath this today. So, I mean, when I first put it, put it on, I was getting like kind of splotchy skin here, but it's calmed down ever since. So that's good. But I, I am a little sensitive to, to certain wools. Um, so, but normally I wear like more of a t-shirt underneath this and it doesn't bother me at all. My contrast colors were the white is Yarn Cafe Creations Americano DK and Eggnog. And then the green is Yarn Cafe Creations Americano in Cactus. So I really, you'll notice my color work is a little muted. I really like that. I did want more of a blue color, but I actually think that this color combination works really, really well and looks really good. So I'm really pleased with that because this was my first time kind of putting together my own colors and I was really nervous about it. I didn't know if, I didn't know if I got it right and I think I did. So I really like this and I think it looks nice. The only mistake I made was on the sleeves and you can't even tell, but um, this sleeve I did first and something happened where I was, I started, you know, cause when you do a sweater sleeve, your beginning of round is generally in your underarm. And I was doing the, um, the color work. And at some point I missed a half around and I started the color work then on the outside. So I'm missing half a round of color work, but because, thankfully it's muted enough that you really can't see. Um, I'm getting a lot of snags from my dog today on this. And I do feel, I don't know if you can tell, um, it's gotten kind of fuzzy. You really can't tell, which is nice. Um, but I, I did just, purchase. I don't own one yet. A gleaner just to help keep this from looking pilly. I feel like it's pilling a little bit. Uh, but I have been wearing it for like a week and a half straight. So maybe there's that. <laughs> so this is my first finished object and I really love it. It's really great. Um, I really like Tiff Nealon's patterns. I have tested it for her at least three times. She's so sweet and I, and her Instagram is great. So check her out if you're interested. I, my next sweater that I'm planning to cast on is another Tiff Nealon pattern um, that I'll get to when I get to, but I have three on the needles right now. So I want to finish a couple before I get to casting on another one. All right. So my next finished object, I have four. That's a lot. <laughs> I did finish my Advent socks. I meant to get a sock blocker for these, but I forgot. These are the Oh What A Night 31 Stripe Socks from the Wool Baron and they're just everything. I just love them so much. And I do think I started on the wrong side, but I, it's fine. 
I don't know. If, does anyone know? Is is there like, did I miss something that said like start on this end? I'm not sure. But I started with the purple and then I ended with this like sage color. And then you can see there's just a hint of the purple coming up again. So I this is 31 and a little bit of stripe. And I used Leading Men Fiber Arts for the cuffs and heels. This is their heirloom color. This is for neutral, one of my favorites. I think it's just so pretty and I love these. So I'm putting these away for next winter because that's what I do. I, any socks I make during the year, I just kind of put away so that I have them to kind of give myself uh, for Christmas or the new year. So I'll miss these though, they're really beautiful. <laughs> so Wool Baron, Oh What A Night, um, yeah, 31 stripes, a lot of fun. So then I did start a make nine board for this year. I've kind of made them in my head before and never completed it. And I've been watching Noble Character Crafts, um, her podcast lately, and she hosts the knit along for the make nine challenge. And I just thought, why not do it this year? So I made a board, which I was kind of nervous to do, but it was super easy. And um, I finished something off of it already. So I did the Joe's Perfect Slipper Socks by Cozy Up Knits. I wanted to make these for like two years and I don't know why I didn't do it before. I guess I needed a make nine board to do it, but here they are. They're DK, so they're fingering weight held double. And they have this really neat squishy pattern on the top and they're just great. So the yarn I used is Lolo Did It, Low Original and the Colorway Versailles. And I don't know if you can see how gorgeous this yarn is. I've decided this is my favorite color of all time. And if I buy, year, if I buy yarn this year, it will be a sweater quantity in this yarn. I don't know what it is. I The way that she does like that chocolate cover, ugh, chocolate cover, chocolate color with all of those speckles. I just love it. I think it's so pretty. They only sell this yarn in the fall. So if I still feel this way in the fall, I will buy a sweater's quantity and I will have a sweater in mind. So whether or not I buy fingering or DK weight yarn for a sweater, but I love these. They're great. I will say this pattern was a little funky and I don't know. I really like the Cozy Up Knits girls. Their patterns are generally very simple, but there's something in how they write their patterns sometimes that makes something simple seem more complicated. And I felt like that with this pattern. This is so easy. You basically, it's a toe up sock, DK weight, so super um, fast. And then you do basically like a fish lips kiss heel but then you also do like a gusset, but like the way it's, once you figure that out, it's super, super easy, but the way it's written just kind of made it feel harder than it was. And then once you realize what they're telling you to do, you're like, oh, that's really easy. So anyway, overall super easy pattern and I'm really happy with the result. I don't have a lot more to say about them. I love them. Okay, and my last finished object, I don't know why I said that like that. Let me take a little tea. So my English breakfast tea and this like knitted mug that was at Target a couple years ago. I really like this one. So my parents asked me for a sweater for their dog, Toby. He's a puppy. And I they had asked me before Christmas and I said, well, Toby's gonna have to wait till after Christmas because you all saw what I had going on for Christmas knitting. And so I <laughs> made him, it's the same as the same pattern as the sweater Penelope is wearing. I think you saw that at the beginning but it's the Proud Puppy Sweater. And this is made all out of Cascade 220. And I just did some striping. Even down here, it's a just low contrast stripe. And yeah, it's really cute. It should fit him. He's very, very tiny. This is, I did this in almost all of it in one night. I think I just had to do the ribbing around the bottom and the ribbing around the armholes the next day. I watched season two of Cheer and just kept going. Super easy pattern, obviously. Come here. 
So the pattern is from Lion Brand Yarn. Ugh, girl. And um, Penelope is wearing hers today. Her, Penelope was made out of the Amazing Yarn from Lion Brand Yarn. She's not being a very good <laughs> model today. Um, but I probably made this four, four or five years ago and it's still, it's held up really nicely. It really probably needs a bath. But yeah, so she's my little proud puppy. Yeah. So I will try to get a picture of Toby wearing it. My parents were in Florida until yesterday, so I will give it to him probably today and try to get a picture of Toby wearing it. It should fit him. I don't know. I didn't really do any measurements. I figure this is stretchy, so if he needs to stretch it a little bit, he'll just look fat because they're stripes. But, um, but no, I think it's great and it's really cute. This was the yarn that I bought because when I thought I was going to make a whole bunch of different Christmas trees for Christmas ornaments this year and that went out the window. So I still have a ton of this yarn left and I don't know what I'm going to use it for. But this was easy and fun. So if you have a dog in your life that needs a sweater, the Proud Puppy Sweater by Lion Brand Yarn. And I just used, I don't know, it's Cascade 220. I think it's worsted. So it, it worked just fine. Okay, let's move on to works in progress. Now the dog wants to play and she's snagging my sweater. Okay, we're done now, okay? Just let me get through this. Okay, I mentioned that my husband's birthday is at the end of the month. So I've been making him a pair of socks for his birthday. That's been our tradition for the last couple of years that I make him a pair of socks. So I have a half finished object. Here it is. Can you tell what these are? I don't know if you can. Eggs and bacon, <laughs> if you can tell. So these are the Abby Grasso self patterning yarn. It's artistic yarn by abbygrasso.com. I don't know if you can see. Um, and then it shows you a picture of the patterning, which I really like. So this is called Bacon and Eggs. So my husband's name is Nathan and his nephews have always called him Eggs and Bacon Uncle Nathan. So I thought these were going to be kind of a perfect sock for him. This is a one of a kind uh, yarn from Plucky Knitter. Sorry, I just want to see what's happening here. Okay, we're good. I used this in my shawlography. So this was a shawlography leftover and I used that for the cuffs and the heels. I just did a fish lip, fish lips kiss heel on this one. Um, it That's what I always use for my husband. And he, I don't know if he would tell me if it doesn't fit well, but it seems to fit. His socks don't come off his feet or anything. Um, so yeah, that's the first one. And I am almost done with the second one. So this is where I'm at. So when I do self-striping or self-patterning yarns, I don't count rows, I count uh, stripes. So once I finish this little egg, egg section, then I will do two rows of the bacon before I start my decreases. And I, I started doing a rounded toe just recently and I do like it. I think it looks a little less wedgy and for me, all I do for the rounded toe is for my decreases, every other time I decrease, I decrease four stitches in instead of just two. So all the, all the in decreases aren't just on the side, then I'm going in a little bit more and maybe you can kind of see that. I don't know. So anyway, I've been liking it. It's good. I will finish this today. His birthday is on Sunday. So I will wash them and block them for him and give them to him for his birthday. So he's turning 44. We're starting to reach that age where the numbers sound kind of old. <laughs> All right, my next work in progress is, and I haven't worked on it a lot, but enough that I felt like I could show it. It is in the Stitching the High Notes bag. So I've shown this before. This is my Throw Over by Andrea Mowry. Here it is. And if you watch the I Heart Knitting podcast with Laura of I Heart You, she makes bags. I have a lot of her bags. Um, I, fall, I copied her, her palette exactly. So she made this 
uh, sweater in this yarn and I really liked it and then I got the same yarn. It's Knit Picks Wool of the Andes so it's a very affordable yarn and the colors I believe are Onyx Heather, Blossom Heather, Fjord Heather, and Brass Heather. I did that by memory and so I probably picked it up and knit like two inches on the body this week. I think I'm close to ribbing maybe just another inch or so then I'll start ribbing and then I'll do the the sleeves. So my goal is to finish it before I head off to Disney. I would like to have at least one sweater. Well, I mean, I'd like to have two sweaters finished like within these first 25-ish days of the year. So that's kind of my my goal. Um, and I think this is going to be a really wearable and really pretty sweater. So I'm really excited for this one. I didn't gauge swatch and I hope it grows just a teens width blocking but I don't know I think it'll be okay one of my goals for my sweaters this year is not just to complete more of them but to be less lazy with some of the finishing and some of the <sighs> gauging and you know really if I'm gonna put the time into making garments making sure that they look the way I want them to and fit the way I want them to and are finished well so I've never done a tubular cast on or bind off and so that's a goal I have this year. I did long tail here which looks fine but I think it makes it look homemade more. Um, so I'm really going to try tubular bind off and bind on, cast on, whatever they're called, <laughs> um, this year and try, um, you know, like I always know that doing the backward loop cast on isn't the best for me. It's always kind of sloppy looking but I do it every I do it anyway every time so I really want to try to find a better way uh, to make these underarms look a little bit neater as well this year so I have some different goals with my sweater knitting that I think will be nice so um, but yeah this has been getting as soon as my husband's socks are done this is gonna be my main focus to finish um, and then I have the I have two other works sweater works in progress and I want to finish at least one more before I cast on a new one so I have the petite knit one, I can't remember the pattern name, that I showed a couple episodes back, which I just love. And I know I'll love it as a finished object, so I want to finish that. And I have my love note, and I think I'll be able to finish that pretty quickly too, once I just sort of focus on it. Enough! Enough, sweet pea! Enough! Okay, and my last work in progress, and this is kind of a weird one. I just picked this up in the last couple days. Um, and made some progress. So this is my Northeasterly blanket by Skeenanigans. And I had started this a long time ago and it was much longer than this. And then I saw Amanda of Birch and Lily. She started putting in these Dove Heather sections and separating her colors. And I just love that. I thought that was perfect. How it just brought this, the um, blanket together and didn't make it look quite so scrappy. So I decided to do that. So I ripped out what I had done and started over. And so I had done, I think, two months of a subscription of row one minis. And I really liked it, but they add up really quickly. <laughs> so I stopped after two months. And um, if you don't know, row one minis come like this. And I don't, I have Emma's yarn and lichen and lace are the two that I got. And so I'm just kind of going through these minis and adding them into the blanket. And the way that I'm doing it is I'm following the pattern, but I'm doing 40 round or 40 rows of this color, 40 rows of the row one minis. And I'll see how far that gets me. Um, I have a ton. This is uh, Knit Picks stroll in dove heather i have a ton of this yarn so because i've gotten this to be a neutral in a couple blankets and sweaters and i really love this color and this yarn so soft too so i think this will be a really nice blanket when it's done i don't know if you can tell but there's definitely a mistake down in this blue section where i've missed a couple decreases but i figure um, and if you haven't seen this blanket like after i finish however long i want this row to be then you attach a row next to it so I figure when I attach this will improve <laughs> and when you stretch it out it doesn't really look that bad 
Um, I did with the, so I started working on this again. I think I was here. I, so I added the gray, the pink, and then a little bit more gray. Um, I started doing the Weave and Steven method for adding new colors starting yesterday. So I think what I'll do is I'll go back and just weave in these ends so that before I get too far into this blanket. And I think I'll continue to do the Weave and Steven method and then just snip, snip these ends when I'm done. And then I don't have all the ends to weave in at the very end of the project, which will be really nice. But I don't remember what these colors were at all because these were colors I'd already used in the blanket and then I pulled them out. So I'm not sure what colors they are, but they're really pretty and I'm really happy with it. My goal in knitting life is to make a blanket for each of my kids by the time they graduate from high school. It doesn't have to be for high school graduation, but by the time they're kind of at that that point in their life where they might be leaving the nest that they both have a blanket from mom to take with them. So this maybe for my daughter, I'm not sure. Um, we'll see, or it could be for me. I don't know. We all know that I'm pretty, pretty selfish when it comes to knitting. So that's what I've been working on lately. And I'm getting ready to start thinking about what I'm going to pack for my Disney trip. I'm going to have four flights and we're there for seven days, six days at the parks. And we built in some rest time because um, we're staying at a nice resort. So we also want to enjoy the resort a little bit. So I think there will, there will be some knitting time, but I don't want to bring a big project. So I have been thinking about starting another muscle burra for myself, but I'm really stuck on what yarn I want to use to make it. Like I'm really, really having a hard time figuring it out. So when I show you these two yarns, you're going to be like, no, you know exactly what you want to use and um, you just have to choose. But these are the two yarns out of my stash so far that I am kind of thinking about. And my lighting just changed again and I really apologize. Um, but this is a Leading Men Fiber Arts um, show stealer and this is fingering weight. It's super wash merino cashmere nylon. So it's an MCN and it's really soft. And this is Heather's colorway. And I think I'm leaning towards this one. And then I also have this one from Ex Libris, which is Rita. And this is it called Exquisite Corpse. This one was called Heather's. So it's like gray with like, I think you can see, like it's based off of the movie Heather's from the eighties, which makes me really happy. <laughs> um, and then this one is Exquisite Corpse. And I really like this one too. It's, they're very similar. It's just, I don't know. Like when you look at them, there there's a little bit more blue in this one. This one's more gray with just kind of 80s speckles. I think it's going to be this one, but I'm going to marinate. If you have a thought, let me know. Um, and then I've also thought about like, do I do like stroll tweed and just like some like brown and green? But then I thought my coat's black and I don't think stroll's going to be as warm as a different yarn. So I, I don't think I'm going to do that. Then I've also thought about bringing a scrap, the scrappy day cowl by marinated yarns. And it's just like a scrappy infinity cowl, but I'm having like analysis paralysis about this. Like what, what color should I use? Should I just bring scrap? Should I have like a, should I have like a main color throughout the whole Thing. Like, I am just, I don't know why. I think it's just like vacation stress coming up on me. So, I'm probably, I'm definitely going to cast on a muscle burrow to bring. And it'll either be socks or this scrappy day cowl that I'll bring as a second project. I just have to be careful. I always pack too much yarn, like thinking I'm just going to be sitting and knitting the whole time. And I never, ever, ever do. Okay. I am going to do book club really quickly because. I feel like my lighting is becoming a problem again, and I don't know why. So I apologize if this is difficult to watch. I finished reading <laughs> The Exiles by Christina Baker Klein. 
I really, really enjoyed it. I thought it was really well researched. It was really amazing. There was one issue I had with like some character plotline development, but then when I got to the end of the book, I realized that Mathena was based on a real person. And so I was like, well, that just makes me sad. Um, it was a great read. I would highly, highly, highly recommend it. You know, it, it had some plot things that I was like, eh, you're kind of forcing that or oh, I didn't really love that. But overall, I thought it was really well done, really well researched and a really good piece of historical fiction. I would highly recommend it. I also read The Year of Less, How I Stopped Shopping, Gave Away My Belongings, and Discovered Life is More Than Anything You Can Buy in the Store, or a Store, by Kate Flanders. And I did really enjoy this book. Um, did I think it was perfect? No. I think she has, I'm not planning to become a minimal, minimalist, but her thoughts, it was a really good thing to read for me personally right now when I'm trying to buy and acquire less in my life. Um, you know, she's a single person or at least was when she wrote this book and she could really just focus on her own basic needs. And I feel like when you're a mother, you can't. But I have found that there's been times when this book has come back to me sort of and I've thought, uh, nope, I don't need that. I'm not buying that. And that's that's been good for me. Because I definitely am one of those people that can be on Amazon and be like, oh, well, while I'm buying something, I'll just get this, 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 and this. So for me personally, I've started when I see a book that I want to purchase right now for either my Kindle or my Audible or have delivered to me in the mail, I've been putting it in a reading list. And then I figure um, if I really want to read it once I'm, you know, halfway through the year, then I can go and try to check it out from the library or, you know, maybe I can treat myself with a book in like four or five months. But right now I have a pile, literally two, two stacks of books in front of me that I don't need to acquire anymore right now. So that's been really helpful for me. I'm definitely guilty of going shopping on a website during the day when I'm kind of bored. And so since January 1st, I've allowed myself to go and like price things out and just say, you know what, you're going to Disney. So I don't know, it is not at all a book about knitting, but I've kind of just taken some of the things that she said and applied it to my own life for my own personal goals this year. I have no problems with people who love to shop and buy yarn because I am those people, but I've just sort of reached a point where like, I don't need, to, I, I need to sort of enjoy what I have and not use it to fill me up. I think the last couple of years with this pandemic, I was definitely using shopping as an escape. As I've said, my world is very small. So yes, packages coming to my door make me very happy. And so I've just had to figure out different ways that, to like look forward to things without it being stuff related. <laughs> so it was a good book. Currently I am reading the Eye of the World by Robert Jordan, which is the first Wheel of Time book. And you guys, it is going slow. Um, I'm reading it on my Kindle. My plan is to bring this with me to Disney. And while I'm stuck on the plane, I can knit and read off my Kindle. So that's what I'm planning to do. I figure I have like 21 hours left in the book. So I'm hoping I can make a dent. I don't know why I'm not enjoying it. Um, I don't know nothing wrong with it. It's just going slow for me and I feel like it is, I'm not loving it. So if I don't finish it while we're in Disney or I'm not liking it better, then I'll scrap it and move on. But I'm trying, I'm trying, I'm trying. I'm also reading Legendborn by Tracy Dion and I really like this. It's, I'm listening to this on Audible. It's really good. Um, the main character, Brie. So this is like a Arthurian, is that a word? Is that how you say it? Um, a, King Arthur and Merlin and his round table like it's a legend story <laughs> yay I have I can use words well um so it's kind of this young 16 year old girl who is a black girl in this very white history and it's really 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 well done um I it's not perfect you know like I she's at a college campus and I don't believe she's gone to a single class or even referred to going to a single class. Like there's some pacing issues as well, but I think this is 
the uh, the author's like debut book and overall she has crafted a really fun and enjoyable story um it is fantasy related so like there's monsters and magic but i i'm enjoying it i think her perspective her character is really great and i really am enjoying it a lot so i have like an hour left of it so i'm pretty much almost done i think i'm sort of at that point where like i'm enjoying it enough that like I am not in a rush to finish it. I don't know if that happens to anybody else. Like you like you kind of tear through a book and then all of a sudden you don't want it to end. That's where I'm at with this. This is definitely a great book. Legendborn and I really really like it. It's a really awesome take on the legends and you know like I said there's a couple like not I don't even know if I would say weaknesses. It's just for me being the kind of person that I am, the reader I am. I'm like listen, if we're on a college campus, there should at least be some like some college work I don't know does she have an advisor does she have <laughs> I don't know what are her classes does she have homework I don't know so anyway it's stupid I shouldn't get hung up on these things but I do but that's it for right now for a book club so I think I'm really going to be focusing on the Eye of the World for now I will also listen to something else on my Audible obviously I haven't picked out my next book yet but it'll be Fun. I am definitely glad that I paused my Audible membership so I'm not just packing more books on and now I can go back and see like oh yeah I remember when I got that one and I want to read that book now so overall for me in general this year my my word of the year is less and enjoying what I have and I mean it's only been like 25 days but I do feel like I've been making some positive changes for me and that have been making me happy and bringing me joy so it's just where I'm at. And this was a real rambly. I probably should have taken a break so I didn't get so bumbly here at the end. But I really appreciate you joining me today. And if you hung on this long, please feel free to like, subscribe, come back another time. Please join into my or join my knit alongs. And I'm really sorry about this lighting. I I don't think I can record a third time. So we're just gonna go with it. But thank you so much. I'm so glad you're here and leave a comment if you want to, and I will see you next time after my trip. So bye.